y'all. Please uh, excuse my hair. <laughs> I'm about to get a haircut. At least my eyebrows is done. At least my nails is done. You know what I'm saying? But uh, welcome to the third part of the trilogy for Kanye, the projector, success story. And maybe in this one, it's going to not be as much uh, success, but the the bitterness. Maybe we're going to see more of that projector bitterness side, the not self side that we don't want you guys to be in. I don't know what to expect from this third episode. I'm really excited and scared to see what happens. But uh, we gonna see. Last video I did, I tried to put some of the the film, like I recorded parts of it and it copyrighted my video. So I can't like monetize it, which made me a little upset. So with this one, I, if I do record it, I'm going to change the pitch. I'm going to adjust it so hopefully it doesn't copyright it. I don't know. We're going to try it and see because I think it did add to the effects on some of the parts. If I feel like there's anything really necessary for me to record on the screen, I'm going to put it in this and then we'll go from there. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Let's. I don't know what to expect from this. I feel like it's going to be the crazy part. Like we saw all the rise to success and the fame and the ego and the confidence. But now we might see something different. Um, he just recently released that video of like his music video with Pete Davidson where he was like killing him or something like that. So that's, I don't know what's going on, Kanye. What's going on? But yeah, we're going to jump in, y'all. I'm scared and excited. Let's go. Why are you really arrogant? Yeah. yeah, I heard that too. I heard that you, I heard, I heard that you were really like out of control. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call Kanye West. Y'all should have seen um, what's his name? I thought Kanye West was blistering. Don't go there. Chris Rock's face. If you don't want me to say how I feel. If I don't win, the war show loses. I fight for what I think is the best at the time. I was just being an advocate for what was the best out there, which just so happens to be me. I just stand up for what I believe in. It's like that's what my parents saw me. Because Kanye knew that I listened to him, then mm -hmm. he really didn't have a big problem listening to me. There's so many sides of Kanye, so many aspects of his life that people don't know about. Mm -hmm. I think he's a spectacular young man, I really do. I think he's very special. You've said, you're a mama's boy. You love your mama, and I think that's great. Three times during the winter, Kanye West is going to sing a special song for us before you. Just tell us a little bit about the song. Well, I forgot what I was going to say because I started watching that. But, um... I think I was going to say something about the fact that, I mean, he's always been arrogant. We know this. He's always been confident. But you can see a big difference when he was really starting to feel himself right here. And it's it's not like a bad thing. Um, I think it's only a bad thing, really, if you are diminishing other people in that process. Or, you know, trying to say that you're above other people in that process, which is kind of where he's going with it. But... We gonna keep watching this. To be honest, this is really just sad. Like, <clears throat> it's not scary right now. It's sad because we're at 18 minutes and 28 seconds, and you know the the film, the third episode, really started with him and his mom. They were doing a lot together. They're you know trying to make these organizations and do these big things, and like you can tell that I don't know. Like, just like human design aside and everything aside, I feel like we in a subconscious way know when we're going to die or like when other people are going to die um because obviously his mom passes and it, we were just waiting a matter of time to see when that would be brought up here but <clears throat> i think it's just a subconscious thing that we have because goody said that he like the bigger he got the more he wanted her around and i feel like you know she was getting older and he just wanted her there, but on a subconscious level, he could feel, you know, maybe that something was going to happen and he was trying to hold on to her. Like, you know, I, I've never like lost somebody close to me, so I can't say I went through that experience yet. But I can imagine with some people, they might feel like they knew when somebody was going to die and they felt more attached to them or like um, certain people before they die, maybe they start acting different or just start giving things away. They don't know why, you know, stuff like that. So I just thought that was interesting that we've reached this part and, um, 
I feel like this is the yeah, this is the 911 call. <sighs> I don't want to be sad. I don't want to cry, but it's sad. She really, the fact that like as a mom, like you knowing your child's rap, all your child's raps, like is really mind blowing to me. Like word for word, that is like true, true, true support. Like not just believing in them because they're your child, but believing in them because you believe they're talented. That's a whole another thing. Like that's really crazy to me. One day creating a fashion brand. There's so many. Oh, this is at uh, twenty six oh one. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to break past because of people's mentality. I say things the wrong way a lot of times. My intention is always positive. So I don't know if they're gonna like really get into it in this um, episode, like that whole thing that he did with Taylor Swift, but I know the moment that his mom died, he as a projector stopped recognizing himself, right? It was like, it just went out the window. It was like, he didn't care anymore. It was like, you know, he was in, in full ego mode now. It wasn't even about him anymore. It was just like, I don't care, like it's whatever. Like the person, the main person that gave me the recognition that I needed, is not here anymore so it's kind of like why should i recognize myself anymore and maybe that's something that a lot of projectors go through if you ever lost someone that you had a lot of respect for or a note or respected you gave you a lot of recognition it's kind of like once that's gone it does feel like a, a piece is taken away right and with kanye having all of those um undefined and open centers in his chart he only has two defined centers maybe donda his mom filled up a lot of those centers for him so literally that's something that only those two defined centers is the energy that he has consistently in himself that's his energy all the other energy comes from external sources so if donda was filling up a lot of those gaps in those spaces that's something that will never fully be able to be replaced and so you know, you can just kind of see where he went off the deep end here. And then with the Taylor Swift thing, you know, a projector interjecting themselves into the microphone, stealing her moment. Nobody invited him up there. It was really bad. And that's something that people brought up for years. Like, and that made a lot of people lose respect for Kanye as well. And, and he couldn't see how that was like a big issue. And you know, the Swifties they go hard okay they they got like the um the justin bieber beehive effects like <laughs> don't come for for my girl that's how they are and so that was like probably the worst thing he could have ever done in his life like seriously as a projector um it was really bad for him it wasn't received well it didn't do what he thought it would do it was embarrassing i'm sure beyonce was very embarrassed um everybody was experiencing secondhand embarrassment and so projectors please never ever ever do that ever like if somebody is performing or giving a speech and you just feel like the need to go up there and Kanye does not have a defined throat so if you have an undefined throat it it is like you're less likely to to be received well when you just speak out of context or you just speak out of nowhere or give advice or give opinions when nobody asks for it it just doesn't go well for you um so just be careful about that so yeah let's let's continue on and see what else we have here barack obama speaking and saying that kanye's an a-hole interesting i just thought of around 3505 when they're talking about kanye's fashion line i wonder if anybody like kind of recognized him in fashion before he just started doing the fashion because usually how it goes is like projectors 
are naturally skilled and gifted in something and then they're invited into the next thing like well he started as a producer you know he rec he started recognizing himself as a rapper but then other people also you know recognize him as a rapper so he transitioned there like i wonder who recognized him in fashion like i don't know how successful his fashion actually is um but it was just something that crossed my mind like i don't know how that happened because we didn't see too much obviously there wasn't documentation much from cootie to see how that unfolded so yeah just a thought the only I'm waiting for the beat to drop. It's taking forever. If your metro don't trust you, I'm gonna beautiful morning. You're the sun in my morning bed. Nothing wrong. That song was fire. It was. It's so funny that I came back here with a haircut. Like it just, same location, same outfit. <laughs> this is just a new day. So I started it yesterday, the video, and then I went and got my hair cut, and now we're back. So, hey guys. Uh, yeah, let's continue. <laughs> I remember this um, this song at uh, 4432 when he was really, I feel like being more open with his mental health. And um, I've never been the type to like, categorize mental health with astrology or mental health with human design um i feel like in every you know system there could possibly be correlations but i feel like right now you know it's a very touchy subject to try to correlate i just think it's this is more so just my commentary just watching and observing um i feel like here it's more so like you know he was really just struggling with his mental health versus like anything to do with him being a projector now like in the current times i feel like <laughs> a lot of it is yes some of this mental health stuff but also just this bitterness that he's acquired over the years so i think it's both like it's they both can coexist you know I really resonated with this song when it first came out. I was going through something mentally too at the time. And it, it actually kind of helped me get through my stuff. Part right here. I know y'all can't see it because it's uh, paused, but I'm going to read it to y'all at 5617. He says, My eyes are now wide open and now realize I've been used to spread messages I don't believe in. I'm distancing myself from politics and completely focusing on being creative. And, you know, Kanye, he, let me turn the camera back around. Kanye has a lot of undefined and open centers in his chart. And I don't remember if I really told you guys in this video or one of the videos that the more open centers you have, the more likely you are able to be conditioned by outside influences because this is energy that you take in and amplify it so you know when you have undefined centers you're so susceptible to other people putting their ideas on you um especially with the undefined head you take in a lot of inspiration from other people but it doesn't mean you need to act on every single thing or these are just ideas that other people have they're not really meant for you but you amplifying them might make it seem like maybe this is for me and that's why you have to go back to your strategy and authority really your authority to see what are the right decisions for you to make and, and what's the right path so you know if he thought that he could like rule the world or be a president that might not have been his inspiration um or something that he even really wanted to act upon or a real skill that he has like he has the ability to bring groups of people together yes but maybe not in a politics way and that's what he's realizing right here is that he's been conditioned somehow along the way to you know like feel like he needs to do something with the politics like i said i don't know if anybody invited him to do that i don't think they did or recognize that skill in him like you should be president i don't think anybody has ever <laughs> told him that but i could be wrong but i feel like he was being conditioned a lot um, especially as the fame grew, especially as more people were like projecting onto him, you know, he's a projector. Projectors project outward, but 
Um, I also feel like they're susceptible, susceptible to getting projections put on them as well. But um, yeah, so he just kind of realizing now that he had a lot of conditioning and a lot of things that he didn't even want to do. But somewhere along the way, he felt like he had to. So that's where we're at right now. Completely lost. I just looked at it as Where is the love and support in his life? It's playing people's lives. Come back when you figure out who you are. It was difficult mm. watching Kanye on TV. They said come back when you figure out who you are. He doesn't have a defined G-Center. He's never going to really have a fixed like identity and that is where a lot of conditioning are is placed on, upon people with undefined g-center because people expect you to be one way and be consistent in that forever if you don't have a defined g-center you're going to change a lot it's like you're gonna have these periods of, of being different types of people or you know people try to put you in this box of like who they think you should be or who you are and you try to uh, like adopt that it never would work for him you can't put him in any category he's mostly open so it's going to change based on who he's around and what he does so this is where he says he's going to run for president i didn't know he was still doing this in 2020 i can't i couldn't remember we had been working on a film for months when we saw that kanye was actually running for president it's interesting That's when he called me asked him to use some footage for an album that he was dedicating to his mom i said of course and then I told him I wanted to show him what we had been working on. But yeah, um, nobody that I know of recognized him as president. He kind of just told people that's what he was going to do. So he was trying to be like a manifester, you know, in that moment where he went on the stage. I don't remember um, what year that was, what award show that was when he was like, I have decided in 2020 to run for president. That's something a manifester would do. That's like they're informing you what they're going to do and they're going to do it. Kanye is not a manifester. Okay. Even though he has a one line in his profile, which is about informing. He has a different, you know, strategy that had to work for him to even be taken seriously as a president. Like he doesn't, he didn't show any real skills like Obama had, which he's also a projector to show that he is able or ready to run a country you know projectors have to master skills like somebody probably like i said in the beginning i think in the first video of this when i was like somebody probably invited obama to be president like they were like you would be a great leader for our now, i don't know how they said it but you know you get the idea i don't feel like anybody told kanye like yeah you can handle running a country like i don't i just don't see All right, I know it's kind of dark. Um, I finally finished the documentary like a week later <laughs> because I've just been kind of busy and all over the place, so I didn't get a chance to like focus in on it. But um, this third episode didn't have too much about like, like not too much that I could correlate to him being a projector, not fully. I will say the main thing is like Kanye, you know, with him having all that undefined throat and g-center people did really get attached to who he used to be and people with undefined g and undefined throat their personality is based upon who they're around a lot like um you know if his mom was a big influence on his identity he doesn't have a fixed identity to, you know, consistently that energy. So it's like when she left, that was a big part of his identity that also left. So, you know, literally he could not hold on to that. And so that's why it seemed like he was being different or he's changed. And in a sense, like, yes, he did like change, but he never had like a fixed identity in the first place. So it's like you might have attached him to being one way. But in reality, he's a bunch of different things. He's not just one way. Like if he had a fixed identity center, like yes, he would show it to be more consistent throughout the years. But you can see where clearly he changed and like, um, you know, mentally he declined. But his, his overall personality was never going to be exactly the same because it couldn't be. Because um, that's not how energetically his chart is set up to do so. So, you know, we're going to still continue to see more sides of Kanye, depending on who he's around, um, moving forward, X, Y, Z. 
But yeah, overall, it was great. I really enjoyed the first two episodes the most. And it was cool to study the projector um, journey. And I hope you all enjoyed it as well. And you could learn some things about yourself or if you're a projector too. Please comment below. Let me know what you think. And hopefully we'll do this with more celebrities in the future. I am at Tarot by Bronx on everything. <laughs>